hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are here today. Oh, bam. Look at that. Look at that. We are here today. We got the, the Kins uh, over here in Australia. They still respect the, the Kinzer name, and they even put it as the first name here in, in this side of the world. But we are here today to discuss several things. I know this is not a live uh, showcasing, but we're going to do it about as close as we can to uh, live. Obviously, in Australia, it's always hit and miss on the live stream connections. Unfortunately, where we are currently located, it's not going to be the case to happen. But there are still still several several instances and things to be talking about here today around the world of motorsports and it has to do with racing or maybe not or maybe so or maybe here and there i do not know but there has been some decisions made in the racing world recently uh that that seem to be publicly for one reason but privately for another but once again public and private personas we are experiencing that uh, to an umph de degree currently in the world today. Oh, public and private personas, so oh, they can be manipulated in, ma in many, many ways. But then again, personal responsibility is personal, so we will keep it at that. Until it involves motorsports, and then we can uh, say one or two things about this scenario. Now, before we get into something that could... Uh, technically destroy the show and ruin all things of life. We do have a, I guess, a fan question of the day. We do have a fan questions. Maybe we should start having fan questions. This one is from Walker Enarson. Einarson. I'm not sure. But he wanted me or wanted to know, agree with Donnie at all? Like your opinion on high limit? If that is the case, why not a lot of drivers leave the outlaws and go to high limit? Um, and 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 what what I, I don't know how that's actually a question, but what he's referring to is this video right. This is this video right here, and uh, this is a situation where Donnie Shots had some comments on the always race day. Uh, Selzy says, I guess this is a new show that Always Race Day may may be bringing out, which would be a great partnership. I think Selzy has a. A lot of interesting opinions. Always race day, putting in a lot of work over the last few years across multiple different genres of motorsports, especially in dirt track racing. And this is an instance where Donnie Shots has an opinion, and it's a great one. Let's just, and it's great for people to have an opinion at all. And so let's just uh, listen to this opinion and see what uh, what I'm, I'm supposed to agree or disagree with. It says, uh, why did Donnie Schatz opt to stay on the World of Outlaw Tour? He details some of the aspects that went into his decision on the latest episode of, I guess, Selzy. So, here we go. We're on a spreadsheet, and my guys, and this was a big decision in TSR going that way because Tony has a vested interest with obviously selling the All-Stars, which, man, what a kick in the nuts to Ohio and Pennsylvania racing on a regional level, not having the All-Star schedule function. And I don't think you're going to see – the the downfall of that this year, but you will going forward with Ohio and PA car counts going forward. But um, it's not different. There's no rules different. You know, the format's not a whole lot different. It's it's somewhat similar. So really, it's all it is 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 guys doing the same thing on the other side of the street. It's a different ownership. It's um, you know, Brad's trying to do something for Brad that's obviously away from racing. Um, and he can, he can leverage Kyle's name and, and another streaming service flow to, to, to be able to fund all this. And, and, you know, that's when you, when you look at the schedule, my guys were going to spend 45 days more in a hotel and be away from the shop to do more traveling for 20 less races. And, and that's kind of how we look at things. I mean, every day them guys are away from the shop. I got three guys and two hotel rooms and, and I don't have to tell you. Uh, hotels anymore are like highway robbery. If <laughs> if I sold gas for eight dollars a gallon because I could, they'd lock me up. But you can charge three hundred dollars for a hotel room because oh, we got a double B basketball tournament in town this weekend. We can charge three hundred and fifty, four hundred dollars a night, or there's an outlaw race. You know, no rhyme or reason. It's ridiculous. I mean, you just want to rent the room for the night, not buy it for the month. But 
Um, you know, there's a lot of things that that are, that really are the same, and it's just on the other side of the street. So, um, you know, I was involved, spent a lot of time talking with Brad about this in the in, when it started, and you know, a couple key takeaways I take from it was. You know, Brad always said he never wanted to do anything to hurt the outlaws or take away from the outlaws. And that's not really proven true right now. I mean, uh, we went from having a midweek series, which was pretty cool, kind of leveraged some bigger pay in races. But I don't I don't think I have to tell you that it's not about uh, what the races pay to win. I mean, everybody wants to win, but only one guy can and run second. It's third on back are the ones that got to figure out how to make this financially feasible. Yeah. You okay? okay. So somehow that that ends right there. So I don't really. First of all, I think it's kind of worded incorrectly. Why did Donnie Shots opt to stay on the World Outlaws tour? I guess in there they made a little bit of an answer, uh, where they uh, had spoken of how, um, you know, he's going to have to be on the road more for less dates, and that's kind of you know the interesting thing that I had said um, with this freedom factor schedule even though there is a freedom factor with the the high limit racing series um at the end of the day if you're a full-blown sprint car driver uh you you are going to race the high limit or you're going to race more or just as much if not more uh than the, than a world outlaw sprint car series driver because the dates that are technically open for a uh, you know, high limit racing week or two week break. Uh, those are open for the Houston High Banks Nationals, the Knoxville Nationals, Kings Royal, uh, National Open, um, a bunch of other events. I believe Ironman 55, it's open on the same weekend as well. So some big events that if you're a sprint car driver, you're going to go to. I know people keep trying to relate this to the late model industry. Um, and if you want to talk about late model racers who are, are fairly profitable, which it seems like some people think that sprint car racing can be late model racing. And I've been trying to say we don't really have the cars to do that. We don't have the money invested to do that. We don't have the fan base to do that. You know, the fan base, I've been trying to explain to people here in Australia, they've been, oh, you're that guy who hates Kyle Larson. I'm like, no, I, I don't hate Kyle Larson. I just hate how the fan base has been manipulated by a cold trickle syndrome. And what I mean by that is for years upon years, we've been celebrating one guy going to NASCAR in sprint car racing. I've been saying this for five years. Kevin Swindell finally kind of agreed with that a little bit on a recent talk show that he was on. Um, but that's been a problem with building fans for our own drivers. Late model racing, I've, I've seen Jonathan Davenport's t-shirt trailer next to Kyle Larson's. They're outdoing Kyle. In the late model, the late model industry don't care about NASCAR drivers. They're Kyle Larson's, their celebrated icon of their industry is late model drivers. And money hasn't been pumped into little kitties to try to go to NASCAR out of the open or out of the late model world like it has the open world, wheel world. So the money has been invested into super late model racing where it hasn't really truly been invested into that in the in the sprint car racing industry a lot of money if you count up how much money has been pushed by uh, privateer based sponsors into potentially getting these guys to nascar one day as these 14 to 18 year old kids are in sprint cars and midgets that's a lot of money that if you was to invest into the ownership groups of sprint car racing industries and tracks and events that we may be where super late model racing is with amount of competitive top tier funded race cars and fan bases across the country but that's not the case anymore so i don't think we had the or have the car counts or have the fan base to sustain two national series some people disagree with that i don't i i, I think we got a problem there now i do think that sprint car racing needed to start paying more i've been pushing for that for a while as well but i never said maybe we need to split them up or maybe maybe a midweek deal would have been perfect but at the same time the bigger issue here that you have to kind of equate is that a super late model driver races 120 times a year because each national series only has about 40-ish, 45-ish races apiece. So guys are jumping back and uh, forth and running a full schedule because each national series somewhat plays off of each other's schedule, takes a week off, takes a week off here. Now, the sprint car racing schedules that we see within, in our society today with high limit were the case, and the World of Outlaws only ran 
you know, 40 nights and High Limit only had 40 nights and they kind of maybe was on top of one one another when one series is on, on this side of the country, one side or on the other side, kind of vice versa, then you could have potentially a situation where that would maybe work. But what, what, what what's happening here is the World of Outlaws have a full schedule. I know a lot of people are out there saying, I think World of Outlaws Sprint Car Series drivers should have a week off. Or, or more weeks off to go race high limit, like the high limit guys have weeks off to go race with them. But like I said in my last video, or, or a couple of videos ago, whichever one it was, um, you know, there's really not a, a lot of high limit racing events that the World of Outlaw drivers need to go to. Whereas there's a lot of World of Outlaw dri or events like High Banks, Knoxville, Eldora, National, that high limit racing drivers need to go to. So the leash is definitely going to be a little bit off on them. And I think that's kind of what he's saying here is like when you evaluate that entire schedule and the events that you must go to, a high limit driver is going to be traveling a little bit more to technically in the points championship displacement for sure race, you know, less. So I think that's kind of the point being made here. I also think that Donnie is a loyalist to the World of Outlaws series. And when Brad Sweet came in trying to add on some races like I was just speaking of how that that base model model worked, where it didn't conflict with the other series schedules. How's, how I think you could have had uh, 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 any one of these outlaw teams and owners and drivers supporting a high limit racing schedule that was midweek that did bounce in between the world of outlaw schedule. I think that the world of outlaw is not. I still think so. The world of outlaw is not being more open to allowing them their drivers to run those 12 midweek races. I think if this was from the jump, okay, guys, yeah, you can go run those 12. Thanks, Brad. Y'all pay the bill. Help these guys get down the road. You keep this 12 schedule. We'll do this every year. You, this is fine, Brad. Congrats. Let's, let's everyone make some more money. I do think that high limit racing right now would not be a full season schedule. That's what I believe. I think the Brad Sweet and everybody would still be on the World of Outlaw side. I think you'd have 12, maybe even more midweek shows that would open up. But I do not think you would have this split within the National Series. Now, some people who look at things from a little bit more of a vindictive perspective may think differently. But I do think that flow racing and high limit would have been perfectly satisfied being the flow racing night in America for the sprint car world, like the Flow Racing Night of America is for the late model world. I do think how the World Outlaw Sprint Car Series reacted has caused what we have here today. That's what I think. And now we have a very interesting situation where we have two national series and people are having to decide. Now, obviously, these two people on the screen have already decided in, in Giovanni Selzy and in, in Donnie Schatz. I don't think it was ever a question mark for shots. I think he's a very big loyalist to the World of Outlaw traditionalist, however you want to call it, to the World of Outlaw Sprint Car Series, and I don't think that ever would have changed. But something has happened here recently as far as not just where to race, but to race at all. Do we, do we race at all here in the sprint car racing industry? And I think something that is being discussed right here might have played a little bit of a factor. Now, what are we talking about? Now, there's been some, what I mean by that is there's been some rainouts and some races ran based on weather. Weather, obviously, a very big entity, a very big thing out here in the world today. So here's a here's an image right here I want some people to see. Uh, this is the Dubbo. This is a race that happened in Australia this last weekend. Uh, the, the New South Wales Sprint Car title. Um, and, and this was the result of uh, one race team after the race, the amount of mud and and um, just caked on dirt or clay in this perspective as, as I'm getting uh, hit with, uh, you know, you know, what is that? Two kg, three pound, four pound clods of dirt being pulled from the wing. You can see them there on the posts, the pillars of this car absolutely covered because this race ran. Uh, this is a full actual picture of the car. This race ran after a threat of rain. But this Dubbo track, country track as they call it, some of these tracks that are out in the country, not big flashy facilities, but a race track, good race track. New South Wales been struggling with racing facilities with the situation at Eastern Creek. Creek. So they're having to put on sprint car races at tracks that traditionally don't get big sprint car races, and people are coming down to support those events. This was a race or an event that midday was getting rained on. 
and they continued with the event and raced the race. Uh, but there was obviously some drawbacks. Some people were upset about that. I believe the Steve Kant racing team was upset with how much uh, Clay was on the on the wing and how kind of I even had a video of a uh, a flag man getting the brunt end. Uh, as you can see, there's 60, 70 foot, I don't even know, uh, 20, 30 meters, however you want to call it. Rooster tails is what I call this from America. Rooster tails. Look at all. This is not rain coming down from the sky, ladies and gentlemen. Those are those. That is dirt clay being slung out into the outfield. This poor flagman was getting absolutely uh, destroyed. Um, and and he. We did an interview with him. Go check it out on, on all of our social media outlets. Long live the Chaz on Facebook. Uh, Chaz Thompson, myself on Facebook. Uh, Chaz T7Z on Snapchat. If you don't follow that, you might want to. Very entertaining stuff that goes on there. And then Instagram as well with Long Live the Chaz. And of course, here on the YouTube channel as well. I believe we put this on the videos or the shorts, regardless, one of the two. This was kind of some of the blowback. This flagman actually ended up uh, shaving his head. We actually suggested that. That is him with his full head of hair in the video here. Um, And I was like, in the video, I was like, I guess you're just going to have to shave your hair off or something. And uh, it looks like that is what happened. Now, the reason I bring all this up is a lot of people were speculating, and me being in track promotion myself, uh, this race happened, logically thinking, thinking, obviously, this track was a little bit of a drive for a lot of the competitors, and this is going to tie into World of Outlaws, so stay tuned. I know you're all like Australian, who cares? We're over here in Florida and, and getting rained on across the world. But anyways, let's just hold on with me here. A lot of people drove. There was 43 cars. See, they nominate over here in Australia so people know who's coming and where and how. I believe it was 43 cars. It was up plus 40 for to be safe that were going to be at the show. Teams driving. I personally rode in a, a race transporter that drove 10 hours. A lot of people invested a lot of money and time to arrive down there. And the track wanted to put on a show because they got 40 plus cars there from 10 hours away. And it was 60 Australian dollars to enter. So if you do the math at about three people per team, you're looking at about $8,000 in just pit passes alone. Now, the reason I say this as a, as a reason to have a race is it is a yin of a yang situation, even though some teams are like, we shouldn't have a race. Look what happened. Look at the dirt covered car and all this. Some other cars didn't look as bad. I believe this car went to the outside going into one and two and three and four. The last or first couple of laps actually made up a lot of ground. This this car finished 10th, by the way, um, and, and kind of was the flag man, but was a race car getting just sprayed upon as everybody had moved to the inside of the track. And he was the loner or one of the few cars on the top side of the speedway. Now, the reason I allude to this situation is because the World of Outlaws went ahead and canceled their event that they had today. Rained out, they posted, the first day of two here at Bike Week, as they're calling it. Bike Week here, or whatever, the Bike Week showdown or something, uh, extra race at a, at a World Racing Group facility. Now... This is very, very interesting. Uh, when I first saw it, I'm like, okay, so this is kind of the argument for something like this. You know, they just got this example of how a track raced and obviously a little bit of blowback for, you know, having a race on when you got torrential downpours or something like that. You know, they don't want to make the wrong decision, right decision. decision. Maybe they saw that scenario and decided to cancel it so that they don't have to face the, the same type of potential blowback. Although... Dubbo, for example, whether they would have raced or not raced, I think they still would have had a scenario where even if you raced, you would have had some blowback. And if you didn't race, you would have been like, oh, you know, somebody would have been at the track at about four o'clock screaming, hey, it's sunshine is out. They could have raced. And then you have the blowback in that scenario as well. So was no, there's no real winner when you have Mother Nature playing a factor within these events and situations. But something that does play a factor here, and it goes back to Donnie, is you scroll down here, and one of the first comments is by a guy named Dean Gertie. Now, Dean Gertie is known for causing more problems than the Chaz could ever think of. But Dean Gertie said, this is BS. 
old pic. This is a, they're saying this is an old picture. And I think based on the time frame, it was an old picture. Uh, track was fine. No rain in the forecast. They danced do or uh, do. I can't even spell correctly. Due to embarrassing car count. And then Phil Beaver said, yeah, uh, it's not even dark. Yes, I call BS. Um, and they were basically saying that this was due to low car count that this event was canceled. So similar to how the other event went on forward or pressed on forward because they had 40 cars on the hand and there was a lot of cars to boast about, profiteer for, from, and a lot of investment from people traveling. So it was kind of a hard decision. You know, people are there 10 hours away. You want to get a race in just to kind of reward them and not make them just drive 10 hours back and lose everything. No racing at all. This was a scenario where I kind of verified that there was only 18 cars. One driver said 17 cars at this race. There was not 40 cars lined up to run with the World of Outlaws Sprint Car Series. There was 18. 17, someone else has told me that was actually there as well. So, there wasn't enough cars to race. Back to wanting to be the late model industry, guys. Y'all think y'all can be the late model industry? High limit in some of these supporters. You don't, and, I, and one of my things I've said from the get-go is I don't think we have the car counts to sustain two night. We don't have the money invested into sprint car racing from our fan base and support system to be able to do what the late models do. We, we don't put money in the right places in our industry to make that a reality, what they do over there. Their reality is just a whole nother way of self-sustainability and the economics are properly done for dirt track racing. We're not about that life. We're not about dirt racing. Even some of the drivers are wannabe NASCAR guys and, and feel like their careers are not lived up to the potential because they didn't make it to cup. That's the issues that we deal with. They don't have those problems. They feel like a superstar and get treated like one when they're on the top of their dirt division. Now, this is case in point number one that we have with an issue in having two national series in America. And that's going to be these car counts. Now, when they go down there to Texas, the World of Outlaws, if they don't run tomorrow because they hear the, the rain chances are a little worse, when the, when the World of Outlaws go down to Texas, luckily... There is some kind of sustained 410 sprint car series down there in Texas. The elite non or elite outlaw sprint car series started out as sprint car bandits, went and changed this and changed that. But now they have a 410 kind of open motor series down there. And the tracks that they're venturing down there to are, you know, short tracks. Uh, Cotton Bowl, I believe, will be the biggest track that they're going to be venturing to the World Outlaws is. So you're going to have a, a decent a, a car count down there in Texas because there's some kind of sprint car presence and you're on quarter miles where even a 360 may show up and, and probably do well. Kennedell Speedway Park is going to be California sprint car tracks, but instead of being rough and, and ruddy, it's going to be smooth and slick and it could be some of the best race racing that you'll ever gonna, you're going to see in 2024. I, I'm, everybody's eyes needs to be on this Kennedale Speedway Park race that's coming up. Big O Speedway as well. Some of these tracks they're going to is going to be very, very entertaining. Now, when you're in a state like Florida, which Florida is speed weeks and then done. I mean, I don't know who's been down there. Hunt the Front's helping the late model scene. The late model scene is somewhat got go something going on down there. But the sprint car scene down there is just done. They don't even want to bring 305s in because of the politics down there. I mean, they have a big, big issue. Uh, in, in Florida as far as sprint car series or sprint car racing is concerned. Now, I hear there was four high limit teams, even at this event, to make it a 18-car show. So if you remove those four high limit racing teams, you got 14 cars. Do you think they want to check, put that on their resume, the World Outlaws? We got 14 cars, legitimately, that are going to race. And that flashes back to that NST World Outlaw split area or era because I believe there was a, a, a big concern. I was very young at the point, but I do believe when I thought of going research or just a little bit that the car counts were becoming an issue when you split these series up. And, and really the bigger issue is not having regional sprint car racing across the country, unlike super late models, which you can find 
racing regionally and locally in almost every state of the eastern half of the United States, Midwest on out, you can find late models racing everywhere. You can't find 410 sprint cars racing everywhere. You can't even really find 360 sprint cars racing everywhere. So this is going to be a problem. And once again, maybe this is an old photo based on the time frames. It does look like an old photo. Um, and, and maybe this Dean Gertie guy is right, that it was all about the car counts as to why uh, this was this was canceled. And maybe it was also all about the car counts as to why this race went on as, as planned as followed here in Australia. Now, something that is interesting that has happened with this World of Outlaw sprint car situation that may actually help what's going on is this acquisition. I have been trying to stay away from this topic. I did not want to speak on this situation with ASCS. Because in my opinion, in my opinion, this is just me being from Texas, ASCS has held the, su- the southern region in, in Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana area hostage from premier sprint car racing. It used to be a good idea, guys. I, I'm, I'm not saying I'm against ASCS. I, I think ASCS is, was a great thing. But once those motors regularly, a uh, competitive motor started costing 40000 or more, it was nothing but a downhill swing because a lot of uh, 360s used to be almost the selling point of a 305 a couple years ago, which that's apparently changed. You could build you a competitive motor for 10 to 15, 20,000 and race on a national series. And there was these big car counts, 70, 80 cars at some of these big ASC, 100 plus cars at, at the, three, uh, uh, the short track nationals, 120, 140, I think at one point. And then once those motors started consistently, competitive motors started costing more and more and more. It was just a downhill slope. And then I also heard that there were some territorial battles, uh, in particular with Devil's Bow, when they started changing out their winter and spring nationals to ASCS events that the Outlaws kind of put an X on them on. We ain't coming there no more. So there was territorial battles between ASCS and the World of Outlaws back in the day because ASCS was going around as a cheaper, affordable show, taking dates away from, from tracks, and, and, and obviously, all these series are very territorial, and, and egos play a huge, huge factor. But over the last 10 years or so, maybe a little bit more than that, I feel like ASCS has kind of held back the southern regions from premier sprint car racing, 410 sprint car racing in particular, because it was kind of, these tracks were able to have a big sprint car show but they, they weren't having a really big sprint car show. And the gap between how much an ASCS race and a World Outlaw race was was so much different that it was just like, okay, we'll take it. Whereas I feel like a World Outlaw racing event is actual premier sprint car racing on display. And there was just so much of a gap that the, the regional populations didn't or weren't aware of and never got to even see that I think it took over that region of America and made it a 360-only region. And we see that a lot. Now, slowly, slowly, some people have brought 410 Racing back in. Like I said, Sprint Car Bandits, they got the Elite Series, which is now an ASCS deal. ASCS obviously recognized the advantages of, of that. And then, obviously, you know, ASCS had their streaming with Flow and then streaming here, and it was like nobody really wanted to stream them. And it's like, why is that? And then... You question yourself. You see these guys from the south. They 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 struggle to get out of the south. And they and they and and there's good drivers. You know, you Chase Randall's and your and your Landon Crowley's people never been on anybody's radar at all. You know, Ryan Timms had to go run on a podium with against the Outlaws to really really be hurt. He had to go travel the world to be heard of because he couldn't stay down there winning in that region of the country because nobody was watching it. Nobody cared about the success of an ASCS sprint car driver. It was so, it was viewed so low, even though, even in my opinion, there was some great drivers over the last 20-ish years in that region of the country that never got notoriety because ASCS never carried any. Just never did. So, I, I, I see this situation where, okay, ASCS had an issue where it didn't really, in my opinion, didn't really profit enough to sustain paying 
some of the stuff. Not gonna not gonna keep going into details here, but it wasn't able to sustain itself. It faltered. It went. It was slowly going down the hill, and it rolled into the hands of the World Racing Group, which, from my few discussions that I have had, the World Racing Group, who just like Donnie Schatz just previously said, is man losing the All Stars is so bad, and this, that, and the other. The World Racing Group just inherited, I believe, not only the National Series, but I believe 12 series in total with all the regions and everything. Even that non, or even the World Out, or, or 410 deal down there in Texas, that elite series. Are they going to take this and try to do what I was just explaining to y'all? You know, help Florida. Are you going to go down there and help Florida? I know USCS is down there doing stuff, but USCS did a lot with Dirt Vision to get down there and do some of that stuff. You know, I know uh, East Bay's going away, but that big event that was hosted at Volusia was a USCS event uh, for the 360s to start all speed weeks off for the open wheel crowd. Is that going to stay a USCS race now? I, if I'm thinking logically, no, that's going to be an ASCS event now at Volusia come next year, that 360 event. Where else is is World Racing Group gonna put ASCS? I've heard they're not all they're not necessarily married to it just being 360s anymore. Is this potentially going to be the new Gamot series for the World of Outlaws with an already established name? It doesn't say American Sprint Car 360 series, now does it? Although 360 and more affordable engines are are you know somewhat I guess mentally affordable I know the 360 engines out of the west coast and even some of the 360 engines within the midwest and on this ASCS motor 60 plus thousand dollars that's why 360 racing in some people's opinion needs to go away completely because it's costing just as much as a damn good 410 if not sometimes just as much as a, as a winning 410 motor and it is in a lot of people's opinion so what do the World of World Racing Group or what does the World Racing Group do with this entity of ASCS? The Gummot idea, not a bad idea. Do you tando this? Do you take ASCS and make midweek events that pay a decent amount of money that World of Outlaw drivers can then go and race? Do you try to replace the original high limit idea with your own situation? Since you did think, oh, that was a good idea, but since we didn't have the broadcasting streaming rights, we didn't want our boys to go over there and be able to be profited off of, of a rival streaming company. So now do you do that with ASCS? Do you potentially piggyback off the World of Outlaw series schedule with an ASCS schedule? Does it stay 360? Does it stay 410? What do you do with all these regions now? So all these things that the World Racing Group are worried about in a situation down there in Florida... That a lot of people are alluding to, you just you just canceled a, a race because you could only pull 16, 17, 18 cars. You now have a key to potentially fix that scenario in Florida. You now have a key to potentially fix the scenario in all these dis- different regions. Does the American Sprint Car Series potentially take on an all-star look now? What happens? This is a big key that has been turned that opens... Potentially Pandora's box. And especially if they did cancel that event based on car count, no matter how you want to look at it, they now have an option to fix some of these areas that are just a little too soft when it comes to regular sprint car racing ran in a proper way. But anyways, that would be my feeling and thoughts and just ideas and scenarios on the World Racing Group acquisition of ASCS. In my opinion, it is the best thing that ever, ever happened to the American Sprint Car Series. I think this should have happened a long time ago. That's what I think. Anyways, anyways. Uh, We don't have any fan questions or fan reactions because we were uh, recording this whole time. We weren't live. I tried to carry it as good as I can. Uh... We are going to be at Canberra or something like that, some track, ACT Speedway, here in Australia this week, uh, potentially uh, looking to stay around the Sydney-ish area. We are currently in the Gorge or the or the Gorg or something like that. Um, it's a beautiful town, beautiful area. Uh, once again, go to my Snapchat, follow me, Chaz T7Z, for instant live kind of uh, what we're doing daily. It's almost a reality show on my Snapchat 
also the TikToks and Instagram, long live the Chaz, all this stuff like that and and everything that we got going on. I definitely want to uh, give a big shout out and support to Mad Matt. You see his, his uh, little uh, logo here. Uh, go on to Facebook. And uh, I don't know what, why has somebody blown me up? Oh, it's NASCAR. Na- they want me to talk about NASCAR. NASCAR is literally messaging me right now. I- I'm not lying, guys. Hold on. Let me show you this. Uh, NASCAR is messaging me. Look at that. They're literally messaging me. They won't leave me alone. Why does NASCAR want me to talk about them? I don't really care that another black guy won a race. It's just a race car driver, okay? It's a race car driver. And I don't really care if a female comes in and runs top 10. I I just don't care. I I like race car drivers. I like quality. And I think we all need to start being being, uh, treated and, and treating people with equality. And treating people with equality... And, and and not worrying about color of skin is being blind to the color of the skin and their gender. So let's just be equal. How about that? And then at the same time, uh, what would I want to say about the webbed gloves of Joey Logano? Who gives a damn? We already knew that you need to find some kind of performance advantage on the race car. The race car determines every finishing position that you could ever think of in NASCAR, especially on an oval track. Because it's only two corners and we know you have the engineering and ability to set those vehicles up to run as good as they are, no matter who's steering the wheel. Look at Chip Ganassi Racing and Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson could barely win six races in six years in the 42 car. Went to the five car, dominated the year and won the championship. Is that because he said the N-word and ran some dirt races? Hell no. That's because he got into a better race car. The race car determines how good you look on the racetrack, not how good you are. SVG, that's why he won on the road course, because when you got more than two corners, you can't specifically set a car up to perform. And if you can drive, instead of it being 95% car and 5% driver's driver like on an oval, it's more so 60% car and 40% driver like on a road course. And SVG and these guys can overcome that. Outside of that, when you get on these ovals, especially anytime you're getting over, let's say, 85, 90 miles per hour, It's all about the race car. That's why they're webbing the gloves of Joey Logano, somebody who's won the championship and driving for freaking Penske. It doesn't really matter who you are as a driver. That's why it also doesn't matter if you're black, green, purple, a stick, or a split. It doesn't really matter who the driver is in that form of motorsports. That's why I like dirt racing. That's why I like uh, even supercars. Some of these other tracks or, or cars and vehicles I don't really like, well, I guess I may not like supercars or F1 because, it, once again, technology and all these things, they, they do take, take over in that industry for sure when you get up there uh, in the higher expenditure divisions of racing because you're able to weed out talents. You're able to put guys with more talent in lesser cars like Ganassi or people with less talent into better cars like several other drivers that we're not going to name here today. So it really doesn't matter over there in asphalt racing. I like, I like uh, you know, these dirt cars where you don't just ride in them. You have to drive them. And if you can't drive, you end up over the fence or with a broken ankle or something. You, you can't survive on the dirt tracks if you can't drive. You can become a star over there. So I really just don't pay attention to it much, NASCAR. So you can message me as much as you want. I'm never going to sit here and lick your toes like some of these other people do for the check that comes out your asshole. I'm not not over there trying to eat off the shit you pour down. I'm sorry. That's a two girls, one cup situation that might as well be two guys in today's world. So, that's my opinion on NASCAR. Web gloves, black guys, girls, all this stuff. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It's a big pile of materialism based in superficial um, projections. It's really, it, it's, it's, the, it's the closest thing to the matrix or, or, or anything you can think of that there, there is in the world right now. It's so, it's so based on falsities. It's not even real. They act like they're the best drivers in the world and they're just the richest ones in a private club ran by billionaires. I just wish more people would jump on the bandwagon and try to expose that situation with me. If the world knew that they were just a bunch of paper champions and and just fake, 
and how how because it, it's really hard to explain to people how you know there's a better thrower of the football down the street here at your dirt track than Tom Brady on your TV. That just what makes no sense, correct? But in racing, it's actually true. The world don't know that. And if you want to fix motorsports, that's where you start. That's why I've been talking about it for as long as I can. Just slowly but surely, I think some of y'all are just uh, getting up out of your sheepy sleep. Whether you're the white sheep or the black sheep, you're still the sheep. You're, you're, you're finally waking up and, and thinking maybe, oh, wow. The shepherd guy's been telling me about all these wolves playing my ass for years. Wow. I might, I might. I, 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 that makes sense. That makes some damn sense. How? Why does the world think that that's Tom Brady on their screen and my local sprint car driver is just some scrub who failed in the high schools of motorsports that never existed? This is why they always go after the kids. You know this, right? High schools of sports in the real world is kids 14 to 18 years old that then graduate at 19 or 20 to college. They, they, they want trucks and stuff to be viewed by the society as college. And they want dirt racing to be viewed as high school levels. That way your 25-year-old high school sprint car driver is viewed as a bum, a lower level tier driver than truck racers and bush racers and cup racers. There was just a person bitching on Facebook the other day who's a NASCAR fan saying he hates Kyle Larson going to race late miles because he finishes eighth while Kyle Busch is winning a truck race. And the truck racing is so much glamorous and bigger. Why are we letting Kyle go race and cherry pick if he's looking this bad to people? They think that. But this is why, you know, Toyota and all these developmental people, they, they go after the 14 to 18 year old and try to get them into trucks at 19 or 20 to continue the illusion that they live with on. And it, it, it degrades our form of motorsport so bad, so badly. But, but manipulation is the grounds for a lot of things. Man, I just, I just, uh, Hopefully, hopefully someday y'all will wake up and, and, and the people who actually are, are, are trying to make a living on this stuff or wake up and see the actual reality of the situation. And maybe sometimes what you are cheering for is actually your worst thing. Sometimes eating the hamburger, no matter how good it tastes, is actually what's probably going to kill you in the end. Gotta sometimes... Get some salad in you. Sometimes it don't taste good, but hey, it's going to give you the nutrition to last and sustain on your own instead of living off a of NASCAR welfare. Which, I guess that's what Donnie means by saying Brad's going to live off Kyle's name. That's none of my business. None of my business. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen. Thank NASCAR for that little rant there if you want to thank anybody because I did not plan on talking about it. They did it to us. They did it to me. They did it to all of us. The reason I just went on the rant is because they messaged me on Facebook. I don't want to. I don't care about you, NASCAR. I don't care about you. And if you want me to talk good about you, it's not going to happen. And if you're trying to manipulate me into being Triple H and you being Stone Cold and I'm the bad guy who's going to talk bad about you, well, you got somebody signed the fuck up. I'll tell you that shit right now. But anyways, anyways, this is why I try to ignore him, though. I don't even, because that's the only thing I can do with it. I can only talk bad about him. There's only bad things to talk about, that whole scenario and situation. And a cult, that cult called NASCAR, it's the only way to talk bad. It's the only way I can talk bad about him is to tell the damn truth, in my opinion, my truth at least, and talk horrible about that entire scenario and the scheme and the magic, the trick they have on society is disgusting to me. Because I'm from America, and I believe that the reason I like America is because the merit that built America. And I love motorsports as well. And this thing called NASCAR has ripped, in my opinion, America out of it. Or the merit of the situation, for sure. But then you can hide behind your old stars and bars like you're something special. Take this job and shove it, I believe a man once said, but now we got the whole entire white community cheering for the boss. And uh, seems like they're going to vote they're going to vote for the man. Voting for the boss. T the take just this job and shove it community is now voting for the boss. Wow. Where is Robert Kennedy when you need him? My god. Back to manipulation, ladies and, and gentlemen, back to manipulation. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, before we jump off a bridge today, 
I'm not jumping off a bridge. That's mer- metaphorically. If I continue talking right now, if I go down that political road, oh, I got to stay for, away from that political road. Oh, I got to stay away from it. Before we jump off the metaphorical bridge today with your mind, because I'm just trying to wake you up. If I say too much, you're not ready to fully become aware. So I'm going to stop now. If you like the video, please like it. If you disagree with something I said, please comment below. Uh, if you want to uh, potentially join the support, there are links in the description to join the support, or you can click the membership icon. That'll be to pay to join the support. You can get your name up here on the top of the screen. Or you can just click subscribe or share if you agree with what the Chaz said, if you agreed with what I said or anything I had to uh, have a feeling or opinion of. Share it around. Sharing is caring. Sharing is spreading the message. That is the point. My mouth cannot be sold because I believe there is value in what I have to say. So whether you share or monetarily support the, the channel, to me, those are valued the same. And if you subscribe, well, hell, I may have to send you a few dollars in the mail. Or I'll send you a sticker. Anybody want a chat sticker? I got some over here. Hopefully we'll have some by the time we get back to the States. Hopefully we'll have some by the time we get back to the States. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you don't want to uh, severely hurt me at this point. Hopefully you were you and your ego made it all the way through. Congratulations. Give your, yourself a round of applause. And until next time, be sure to subscribe and uh, something like that. And I really don't know how to end it right now because I got to pee really bad. So, uh, yeah, subscribe, bitches. And uh, um, maybe go to, the, to the, the website and get a hat and a shirt because I've lost mine. I got to deal with this Kenzer's crap. What does that say? 47 industries. Well, <laughs> I'm fine with that. As long as it ain't 57. That's for sure. I actually think Kyle needs to get into another car. Uh, it's time he, he got into a a car that can really perform to his level. I, don't, I just feel like he's having to put that car on his back for years now. Mm. What would he do if he actually got into a premium ride? Mm. Anyways, catch you next time, ladies and gentlemen. As long as we make the show We can be the best or we can be